Okay, good day everyone. So in this demonstration, we shall take a look at the basic fundamentals of the inner workings of a microprocessor, also known as a CPU, which is the shortened form for central processing unit. Now a microprocessor, or a CPU, is where most of the computations of a normal computer would take place. Now for this demonstration, we shall use a bare minimum CPU so to facilitate the highlighting of the key points. And then, in future videos, we shall slowly and gradually build upon this basic circuit and add the additional components when the necessity for such arises. This approach of incrementally building from a bare bone system is most useful for one to get a very clear picture or understanding of the necessity of each of the additional circuits and their functionalities. Otherwise, if in the beginning itself we take a final, fully functional system, in many cases, one could get lost in the complexity of the final jumble. And one would have little to no idea as to why all those additional functionalities are needed to begin with. Okay then, with that introduction, let's now dive into our basic CPU. Now observe that the basic CPU we have used for this demonstration is made of two main building blocks. One is the control unit and the other, the arithmetic and logic unit. Observe that there seems to be a series of wires or connectors, shown here in a hue of purple, originating from the control unit. Thus as these wires originate from the CPU control unit, one can initially assume them to be most likely control wires, used to control the other building blocks. Next observe the AELU, which is the shortened form for arithmetic logic unit of our basic CPU, to be having a few subcomponents. In this video, we shall take a closer look at the functioning of the add subractor subunit. In other words, we shall step through the process of adding to numbers. Now let's start our CPU and see as to what the control unit will do. Observe that the control unit has activated or given a voltage to the first yellow line. Next, it has activated yellow line 2. Let's pause our control unit for a moment and let's follow this yellow line and see where it leads us to. We see another wire connected to this yellow line. Let's follow that lead and see where it goes. Aha, uh -huh. we see that the control unit, via the yellow lines, has been communicating with the DRAM, which is the dynamic random access memory of our computer. Note that there is a separate video, in this series, describing the basic fundamentals of the DRAM. A link to that video, can be found in the description section. And now observe, that the control unit of our CPU, has activated or enabled, row number 2 or memory address AE01, of the DRAM. Next via a purple line, the control unit has instructed the DRAM that it needs to do a data read operation. Thus, as instructed by the CPU, the DRAM circuitry would now connect row number A01 to the data output lines. Thus now, the values that were stored at the second memory row or at memory address A01 has been copied to the external data wires. Note that in computing terms, these lines that the memory uses to send or receive data to and from the CPU is called the data bus. And now, let's follow this data bus and see where it will lead us to. And now observe that the data bus is connected to the register A and register B of the add subtract circuitry of our arithmetic logic unit. Now this is a good location to discuss a bit further about these registers and as to why we need them. One would have observed that our memory unit can only send one row of data at a time via the data bus. Thus first, as instructed by the CPU control unit, the memory provided onto the data bus, the values that were stored at memory location A01. And as a matter of fact, the data that was stored at that memory location was the binary representation of number five. If one is interested in finding out more about number systems, a link is provided in the description. So now, our arithmetic and logic unit has one of the numbers needed to do an addition or subtraction. 
But as we all know, we need at least two numbers to do an addition or subtraction. But observe that we have only one data bus. Thus now, if the memory unit is asked to provide the second number, those values will overwrite the values currently in the data bus. Thus note that we have a technical issue at hand. And most likely, even the pioneers whom built the first microprocessors might have also faced the same issue. And this is where the such of registers comes to the rescue. Thus now, the control unit will activate register A, thus saving a copy of the data that is currently in the data bus. Thus realize that these registers are nothing more than internal memory units inside the CPU. And then, once we have a copy, we can next free the data bus and then proceed to inform the memory unit to provide the next data we require. And now, the control unit will enable line number 3 of the yellow lines, which in turn will activate row number 3 in the DRAM. Realize that these yellow lines are referred to as the address bus, for the CPU uses these lines to specify the address of a memory location. Now again, as before, the control unit will inform the memory that it requires to read the data of the memory location specified via the address bus. And thus now, the memory has placed the values at address AE02 onto the data bus. And now, as the second number required for our addition is available in the data bus, the control unit will enable register B and save a copy into it. Next, as both numbers we need for the addition are available in the registers, the control unit will enable the adder circuit. which in turn adds the two numbers in register A and register B and sends the result into the output register. Next, the control unit has connected the output register to the address bus, which in turn has caused the result of the addition to be written to the data bus. If one wonders as to how the output register is connected to the data bus, observe that due to space constraints, even in our basic CPU, we opted to use underground wires. Note that many modern circuits use this approach, where some circuit lines are placed in subsurface layers. If one is interested, one is encouraged to ponder as to what our basic CPU has to do next to store the result of the addition, which is now available in the data bus, to a memory location in the DRAM. Thus, observe that in this presentation, we demonstrated how even in the inside of a CPU, all functionality occurs via the proper sequencing of electrical signals. Thus, in our barebone CPU, the sequence of control signals to add two numbers were as follows. Note that in this sequence breakdown, a 1 represents a control line that is on or energized, and a 0 represents a control line that is off. And this brings us to the end of the video number 1, on the fundamentals of a CPU. There is yet a few more topics to cover, which we shall leave to future videos. Do also check the description section for some additional information. Okay then, if you did enjoy the content or found it useful, do give us a like and do also subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day and see you in our next video. Bye.